Konnichiwa! In this video, we will demonstrate how to solve systems of linear equations using MATLAB. This has all sorts of applications, from solving circuits and truss bridges to predicting football games. A system of equations is a set of equations that share variables. In this example, we see three distinct equations, but they share the same three variables. If, say, y equals 5, then we know it equals 5 in all three of these equations. One method of solving these systems of equations uses formal matrix multiplication. Much earlier in this course, we explained the difference between matrix operations and element-by-element -element operations. From then on, we used almost exclusively those element-by-element -element operations. But now we can take advantage of actual matrix multiplication. This slide is the same one that was shown in that past video, and it provides the formal definition and an example of matrix multiplication. I won't repeat the details here. I want to get to applying matrix multiplication. Here we see an overview of how a system of equations can be solved. First, we must have an organized system of linear equations. What do we mean by linear? All of the variables included must be raised to the power of 1. From that system, we create three arrays with arbitrary names a, x, and b. a is a matrix of the coefficients being multiplied by the variables, x is a vector that lists the variable names, and b is a vector of the constants on the right side of the equal sign. So a times x equals b. From here, we need to isolate x. If these were scalars, we could simply divide both sides by a but we need to be a little more formal when dealing with matrices. The allowed step is to multiply both sides by the inverse of A, as shown here. Note that this inverse of A comes first on both sides of the equation. This is because matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning that Q times R is not the same as R times Q. On the left side, the inverse of A cancels out A, and we have successfully isolated the variables within x. After doing the multiplication on the right side, we will have our solutions. Let's see a simple example. Here we have a two-term system that is nicely organized with all the x terms first, the y term second, and the constants to the right of the equal signs. Step one is to set up the matrices. All the coefficients go into matrix A, all the variable names into vector big X, and all the constants into vector b. Next, we compute the inverse of a, which is this matrix here. We'll let the computer do the grunt work of the calculations for now. Multiplying by the inverse of a cancels out a on the left side. Then, once we multiply it by b, we are left with this vector. This tells us that x equals 2 and y equals 1. We should check our work by plugging the results back into the original equations. Substituting 2 for x and 1 for y, we see that both of these equations are true. So the matrix multiplication method proved effective. There is another valuable approach called the reduced row echelon form method. All the steps are summarized here. Again, I need to start with a nicely organized system. Then I create a single augmented matrix. This holds all the coefficients and the constants. The vertical bar is for visual purposes and does not actually change the math mechanics. In this step, notice that a variable without a coefficient written actually has a coefficient of 1, e.g. y equals y times 1. And if a variable is missing, it has a coefficient of 0, e.g. 0 equals 0 times y. Up next is the reduced row echelon operation. Again, we'll save the nitty-gritty of the calculations for MATLAB. You'll explore these steps in detail in your linear algebra classes. What matters is that we get these results, with the identity matrix on the left side and a list of constants on the right. How do we interpret this? The top row is saying that 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals negative 1. In other words, x equals negative 1. Similarly, the other rows directly tell us the values of y and z. So we have seen two methods. Now we see how to implement these in MATLAB. 
there are actually three syntaxes that work for the matrix multiplication method. The most efficient is this top syntax. Note that this is a backslash. A forward slash would mean division. For the reduced row echelon method, two commands must be used. The first one is to apply the rref command to an augmented matrix, the concatenation of A and B. Then, to be left with only the solutions, we extract the last column. Let's look at both methods used to solve this three-term system. First, I manually define matrix A and vector B. Don't forget to include zeros as coefficients for variables that are missing. Then, we solve with inverse of A times B. This tells us that x equals 7, y equals 0.5, and z equals 3.75. Alternatively, the rref command is shown here. A and B are concatenated into the augmented matrix, and the rref command is used. This full matrix is produced, but we only care about the last column. So, with this final command, we see the same solutions as before. If you would like to practice with solving systems of equations, you can use this page. For each of the three examples, I provide the original system, the arrays for A and B, and the solutions. Try entering these into MATLAB and see if you get the same results.